Whew, now I'm getting nervous. So, hello everybody, and especially hello to the class of 2022. Yeah, it works. It is a pleasure, it is a pleasure, it is an honor, and it's simply wonderful to stand on stage here and to speak to you. First of all, almost, you will hear it over and over again, congratulations, and again, what a great achievement. Please, everybody, join me in the applause for the class of 2022. I do remember, I do remember my own PhD, the day, this very special day. There was nothing like a graduation ceremony, anything, but my beloved father came. Um, as you know, I have a PhD in physics. Yes, physics, no smiles, no strange looks. He was a physicist himself, and he came, I defended my thesis, and he was so proud. And I was so proud. And while I can hardly remember the title of my thesis, I remember the feeling of pride and joy. And I know that you are all proud, and you have all right to be so, but I know a group who is probably even more proud, and they should be, and it's their right to be. And now only it's gonna be you applauding to all your beloved ones up there. By the way, it was tradition at the Institute that we publish our thesis in a real book, you know, you can actually touch it. Uh, and that's what I did, and it sold really well, I have to give up a bit on that, um, seven times. And I'm pretty sure that my father bought all seven copies. <laughs> so, Cornelia already said it, 40 different nations. That is impressive. impressive. We have people from Australia to Uzbekistan. We have Chinese, we have US, we have Pakistanis, we have Indians. It's just amazing. Globalization is still alive. Yes, we also have a third of Germans, but okay. So, you know, that not only makes me very proud as the member of the Board of Trustees, because it means that we can attract talent from all over the world. It also gives me a warm feeling and it gives me hope. So, why a warm feeling? Because I love diversity. I love when different people come together. And yes, they, it's, it's the best way to find creative solutions. Tons of studies have shown it. Diverse groups deliver better results and more innovative, and that's what we need if we want to address today's problems. Yes, it's also more work to be diverse, right? It would be so much easier if I work with all of these little Katrins, you know, these mini-me's. I'm sure we get an agreement in one minute, but will it be the best solution? No, definitely not. You know, in my work with many of the boards around the world, um, it's often not very diverse. Very often I'm the only woman. And you know what? It's neither right nor does it feel good. So addressing you there above, you're gonna be leaders in one way or the other one day. Remember that diversity. Remember the fun it was for you. Remember the better solution it gave. Remember to stay this open perspective. We need this for our future. Remember that moment. So. <laughs> there was no class of 2022. Anyways, so um, I also said it gives me hope. Why hope? Well, because, um, as I already mentioned, we live in a new world order, and one which is less diverse, which is less global interaction, which is less working together on our global and joint challenges, where there is more nationalistic interest and more block building. And this new world order, it's not a positive one. And sorry to bring in a bit of a sobering moment here, I know, um, but I guess it's part of where we currently live in. The past decades, um, if we look back, they have been characterized by global interaction, by global growth driven by that um, global economy and by global, um, uh, globalization. So today's world is much more fragmented. It's much more isolated. Like I said, it individualistic country, local agreements and, and interests dominate. What holds true in one country might be very different than the other one. There are trade barriers, and everything is, is used and basically used as a weapon. That is not a positive development. In addition to fragmentation, we also have block building, especially dominated by the US-China conflict. We don't know where it brings, but it's definitely creating tension across the globe. And in addition, the big state is back, meaning that there's regulation, that there are incentive programs, so the big state is back. And, and this is also part of today's world, there's a war just around the corner in the middle of the European continent. 
And let me be very clear for all those who are directly um, suffering from that, either because you have friends, family, or just connections to the Ukraine, let me be very clear. Our hearts go out to you. And let me also say, for those Russians who oppose the Putin regime, you also have a place among us. We clearly live in a new world order. And also for me, this very personal. Cornelia said it, I'm banned by Putin. I can't travel there since 2014. I'm not sure it's an honor, it's definitely a ban. And I have, I have, a, I have a long history with Russia. Parts of my family come from Eastern Germany. And I lived as a small kid. You know, there was this atomic, uh, you know, enforcement and deterrence. And I was going, I was a little kid, six years old. I went to my, again, here he is, my beloved father, and said, Papi, I'm nervous. What about the Russians? Do they love their children too? And then he said, are you going to hit your brother? Oh, no, I'm afraid he's going to hit back. See, you're going to be safe. That's deterrence. So I understood the concept. Then there came the opening of the Berlin Wall. We embraced it. I even worked in, in Moscow in Russia for three months. And then later, fast forward, 2014, I was in office in the MOD, Crimea 1. And you know, it all started way back then, and, and all my mixed emotions, and actually I could go on and on and on, but I was told this is your commencement speech and not my shrink session. So anyways, I just wanted to mention that I do have a, a long and very diverse history with Russia too. Let's hope this goes some way better than it's now. So in addition to geopolitics, we have two more geopolitical trends. We have ESG and we have geotech. Unfortunately, Andrea Römmler told me I can only pick one because this is your commencement speech and not my geopolitical speech. So I leave out geotech, although I think it's close to my heart, I'm a nerd by nature, but I talk about ESG. Why? Because I think it's so super important. Well, what is ESG? Another abbreviation. It stands for Environment, Social and Good Governance. It's basically building the UN sustainability goals into it. So why is it important for me? Because it is for us and it should be for you. You know, we live in difficult times, and also in difficult times, all three dimensions must be important. We must save our planet, the environment, otherwise we have no alternative. But we should also take care about the S, the social part, labor protection, human rights, diversity, and of course, good governance is the key to everything. And again, addressing to all of you, there are gonna be leaders out there, especially in these times, and some of them might be, you know, my generation and my male counterparts, and they're gonna tell you, oh, times of crisis, let's forget about the S. We are not here to let this happen. And I pledge to all of you, make sure we don't let them go away with that. Let's remember, you are the class of 2022. You make it happen. Don't let it go away. So, I needed that, maybe you too. So, um, we live in a new world order. Every organization, every company, and especially companies, are not getting it that the world has changed. Every organization has to adapt. They have to build out what I call a geopolitical muscle. They have to understand politics. They have to get at terms with that. They have to maneuver. And guess what? Who is ideally positioned to help all of these organizations and the companies? It's you. You studied that. You know all of what I've said and much more than that. You are prepared for that world. You're going to be the ones who explain to all of the leaders and the people out there what they need to do to maneuver that world. And it's difficult to maneuver. But you have proven that you have the stamina, the courage, you have the skills, you have the mindset. Hey, you are the class of 2022. <laughs> This new world order comes with huge challenges. Let's not look around that. Humanitarian challenges, food crisis and everything. It comes with economic challenges. There's gonna be inflation, there's gonna be less growth, there's gonna be energy problem, there's gonna be less innovation because we have less global interaction and we have less joint global working on our global challenges like climate. When I listen to myself, I have to admit, sorry, all of you above, we left you with quite a mess, quite some challenges. It's not very positive, and I think I have to apologize to you. Um, we have for you commencement quite some tasks to solve. But hey, when I look back at my own graduation quite a while ago, there were also challenges left over by our parents and, and grandparents. So there was something which we don't know, at least not here in Germany, which is called unemployment. 
you know, we had 11%, it was double the rate today, and I wanted to work, I was a physicist, I wanted to work at Siemens, an iconic employer at that time. So I applied and said, can I work at you? I got an answer, you're overqualified, which means you're too expensive for us. I didn't even get an interview. I was completely shocked. So don't tell it to anyone, but McKinsey was only a stopgap solution. <laughs> I never wanted to work there. Psst. You know, and in addition to unemployment, there's, there was no diversity and inclusion. It was very tough for me as a woman, and especially openly open, proud, and gay woman, um, to comment at the... At the <laughs> I have to cry in a second, so stop it. But I never had that when I said I'm out and proud and gay, so thanks for that. Yes, it was not that when I, when I was doing my studies. And I brought you also one, we also had our challenges, so I bring you one story. Um, it was in my first term of studying physics. So it was in the main lecture, and professor came in, we were about a handful of women and several hundred men. Uh, yes, true. <laughs> and he said, no, a message to all the women in the room. I expect you, first semester, I expect you to have your PhD by the end of that semester. Otherwise, you will never get one as a woman in physics. What he meant? The first one got it here and laughed. He meant go out, find one, marry one, because that's the only option you have. That was my upbringing. So there is some change. And uh, the story I want to make, change is possible. Nothing is set in stone. We can change our world. And this was about the time when I thought, I'm going to engage now. What the fuck can he tell me? So I thought, I go out on the street. I will demonstrate. I joined a party. I joined. You know, I did some work, because change is possible. You can change things. Nothing is there. And I'm sure you all will bring change to our world. You promise that we will make the world a better place. You are the class of 22. You're going to change things. I think we have to get that shortened. My time is running away. So yes, while we all, you have the right to be angry at us. I agree on that, but we did something good. We created something like the Hertie School, where 40 nations, people can come together, study important stuff, get to know each other, and build out the spirit to change the world. So when I, when I look at you, I can hardly see you, but maybe you can turn out the light a bit. So when I look at you, young, diverse, well-educated, getting connections from all over the world, that gives me hope. And I do believe in you. And I'll leave out the applause for now because I need this minute. So, Einstein's once said, problems cannot be solved by the people who created it. I'm sorry, it's going to be you. You have to solve the problems we created for you. But you will, and I trust in you. We need people like you. And now you say, what is she coming me with? That's a burden? Yeah, it's an obligation. True. But it's also a chance. What can there be better as having the privilege, having the starting conditions? to change the world to a better good. I do believe in you. You know, when I read through the various theses, all the title of the 250 titles, I was thinking, gosh, wow. I wished I knew this when I was in office. And here I said, I have to forward this to Ursula until I read this. So, you know, not only that you're this diverse group of people, you're super smart. You have read, wrote super smart stuff. You have everything you need. And you know what the titles also told me? You care about the common good. You care about our world out there. You want to think, let this please not go away. There might be temptations to look at nationalistic interests to other stuff. Don't let this care for the common good ever go away. Believe me, change is possible. So, as you don't get any homework anymore from the Hertie School, I thought I'd give you some. So, first one, for those of you who go into the public sector, take your energy, do it. And just be careful, the system will try to beat you. They're going to try to assimilate you. Don't let that happen. And when you think, oh, this doesn't feel right, you're going to be right. It's not right. Change it. Change is possible even in institutions. And for those of you who are going to end up in the private sector, well, we need you as well very much. Please help the private sector. Help them understand how politics work. The big status back can only work if both sides work together. It cannot work if the managers out there don't understand politics and just say, ah, politicians, I don't want to have anything to do with them. It's the big status back. We need you out there. And to all of you, stay connected. Stay connected. 
bring it together all the time again. Try to work together on our joint global problems, not against each other. And yes, be the very special class. Be the class of 2022. One final thought, and then I'm over. I already get the looks that she's too long. So anyways, um, my wife said, she always says, Katrin, you nerd, and digitalization, and your stuff, this will not solve the world's problem. Love will. OK. So let me end my speech with a slogan that we, as the Digital Council, always said at the end of each speech, every, every task we were given, also in our last meeting with Angela Merkel. And that slogan is, why? because of love for our future. Thank you, class of 2022.